Like father, like son is usually said when associating the nature of the father with that of his offspring, a relationship of continuity of good and bad. But, should children pay for the sins of their parents? That is a question that surely many combatants and victims of the Holocaust asked themselves after the end of World War II. When we think of Goebbels, Himmler and Goring we think of dehumanized monsters, but the truth is that in addition to being war criminals, they were also family men. It is possible to suppose that the fate of the children of the Nazi hierarchs was misery and repudiation, but you will be surprised to know the different paths that the descendants of the leaders of Nazi Germany took. From cooperating with war criminals to repudiating the memory of their parents. In this video we invite you to know who they were and what happened to the children of Nazism. Joseph and Magda Goebbels had six children. Their names were Helga, Hildegard, Helmut, Holdein, Hedwig, and Heidrun. Yes, all names with H in homage to the Führer. Keep in mind that the formation of a large and 100% German family was one of the fundamental links within the Nazi social doctrine. The destiny of those children would be to become the last victims of their parents. On May 1, 1945, the family was hidden in a bunker next to the Führers. With Soviet forces poised to take Berlin, Magda Goebbels poisoned her children before committing suicide alongside her husband. In a letter to her eldest son Harold, who was a prisoner of the Allies, Magda Goebbels stated, The world that comes after the Fuhrer and National Socialism is no longer worth living in. I took the children with me because they are too good for the life to come. A merciful God will understand me when I give them salvation. For his part, Harold was a prisoner until 1947. He then lived a comfortable life as heir to his biological father's automotive empire. Let's get to know the fate of the children of Heinrich Himmler, the right hand of the Fuhrer, the main person in charge of the SS and the operation of several concentration camps. His daughter Gudrun did not escape the meticulous construction of Nazi propaganda. Puppy, as she was called, was the perfect image of the Aryan girl, patriotic and always dressed in Bavarian clothes. After the war she and her mother were arrested by British soldiers who kept them prisoners of war until 1950. From her release, Gudrun never denied her father or his ideology. So strong were her Nazi ideals that in 1951 she joined an underground organization that helped former SS members escape. One of its beneficiaries was Klaus Barbie, known as the Butcher of Lion for his fame of torturing prisoners. During the 1950s she also worked for the West German Intelligence Service until in 1964 she was fired along with many former National Socialist Party members. Until her death in 2018, Ella Gudrun was a Holocaust denier and World War II revisionist. She was proud of her last name and only used her married name to avoid inconvenience in everyday life. Etta Goring was the daughter of Luftwaffe commander Hermann Goring, the most powerful Nazi leader after Hitler. She spent most of her childhood in a remote house in Berlin receiving expensive works of art as gifts from her father. When the war ended, Etta was barely eight years old. Her father was taken prisoner, but she and her mother were put up at the Palace Hotel, which was in US-controlled territory. Finally, in 1946 both were released. During the Nuremberg trials, Etta was allowed to visit her father on a fairly regular basis until he took his own life with a cyanide pill in October 1946. As an adult, she worked at a rehab clinic where she learned to care for her elderly mother. During that period she participated in some political acts attending the funerals of her father's former companions, but over time she stopped making public appearances. Do you remember those works that we mentioned previously? They were actually her father's war booty, so Etta lost most of her childhood gifts in repatriation lawsuits. Until the day of her death, she avoided talking about Hermann Göring's military career and what happened in Nazi Germany. In the few interviews she gave, she only talked about her family life and her relationship with her parents, whom she always claimed to love. One of the most incredible cases is that of Rolf Mengel, son of Joseph Mengel, known as the Angel of Death and responsible for some of the most horrifying medical atrocities in history. 
When Dr. Mengel fled to South America in 1945, Rolf was just one year old. The boy was raised by his mother and his grandparents in the depressing environment of post-war Germany. Although he avoided talking about the subject, it was only a matter of time before Rolf learned that his father was the infamous experimental doctor of the Third Reich. Joseph wrote to his son using various false names to avoid being discovered. Meeting his father became an obsession for Rolf, not so much out of love, but rather out of curiosity. Their meeting was inevitable. Finally, in 1977 Rolf traveled to Brazil with a stolen passport. The meeting was tense and when he came to the subject of Auschwitz. The 66-year-old war criminal defended himself by saying that his job was only to determine who was fit to work. Later Rolf Mengel said that he did not believe anything that his mother told him. Although he never revealed Joseph's location, their relationship ended at that meeting in Brazil and Rolf changed his last name to his mother's. The Angel of Death met his own end in 1979, but it was only in 1985 that this became public knowledge. Let's move on to the case of Albert Speer Jr. son of the Nazi architect and personal friend of the Fuhrer, Albert Speer. The young Speer was also an architect, as were his father, his grandfather, and his great-grandfather. Despite his last name, he managed to build a successful career in the profession. From a young age he distanced himself from the dark legacy of his father and publicly acknowledged his father's crimes. The Nuremberg judges went easy on Albert Speer Sr., who was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Of course, as much as he backed the crimes, he had the advantage that he hadn't killed with his own hands. His lawyer presented him as an artist driven by circumstances, although the point is that Speer was not only an architect but also the regime's minister of armaments and war production. Upon his release he found success writing books of his memoirs, selling himself as an ordinary guy surrounded by monsters. His son developed an outstanding career as an architect, designing buildings for the Olympics in Germany and China. He died in 2017, but his office was left in charge of several of the soccer stadiums that will be used in the Qatar Soccer World Cup at the end of the year. The last case we'll review is that of Wolf Rudiger Hess, son of Rudolf Hess, right-hand man of the Fuhrer. He was born in 1937 and was christened Wolf, which was the code name for Adolf Hitler. Wolf is another of the many sons of prominent Nazis who never believed in the heinous crimes committed by his father. Before he died in 2001, he professed a fervent admiration for his father and his godfather, Adolf Hitler himself. As you will see, the destinies of the children of evil were diverse and varied. Some vindicated the sins of their fathers, others formed lives away from that darkness. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. Stay tuned for our next video.